Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the AgroMinds live webinar on the theme, Positioning Your Agribusiness to Secure Financing. This is the first in the series of webinars we intend to broadcast to build the capacity of all our numerous partners on the AgroMinds network on Facebook and on other platforms. My name is Francis Osei. I'm the managing consultant for IES Agri Business Consult, which is managing the AgroMinds Africa Challenge. We'll wait for a few minutes uh, whilst we get people join us on the live, on the Facebook live. As we wait, please invite your friends and your peers by sharing the link with them so that they can also be part of this uh, great event. Let me indicate that questions will be taken whilst I do the presentation, but they would be, you can share your questions on Facebook, but they will be answered after the presentation is done. Thank you and welcome once again to the Facebook Live of our first in the series of interactions with the AgroMinds applicants uh, throughout Africa. We hope to finish the program in an hour's time uh, so that those of, uh, those of you who are in locations where the, um, you are head of GMT, uh, would have uh, uh, time to continue evening activities. Okay, so I guess we can set the ball rolling. Once again, welcome to AgroMinds live webinar. All right, so those of you who have um, joined us on the, on the live screen, please uh, keep sharing with your friends and your peers. Please keep sharing. To share the links. Thank you. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I guess that we are we are good to go. All right. So once again, thank you for joining us uh, this this afternoon or evening, depending upon where you sit um, in the Africa region or the globe. We and welcome to the Agro Minds web webinar, live webinar on securing financing for your agri business. My name is Francis Osei. I'm the managing consultant for IESO Agri Business Consult, operating from Accra, Ghana, but I uh, we have worked in, in a lot of African countries. Um, one may ask, who, who am I? I? I have a background in banking, but my technical background is in biochemistry, food science, and agribusiness. And I had been into financing of agriculture for the last 20 plus years. Handled different types of lending to different value chain actors in Ghana and other countries. Personally, I lead and manage this consulting firm which has working experiences in Ghana, in Nigeria, Togo, Gabon, Guinea, Rwanda, among other, other countries, and have done lots of work for a lot of organizations. Thank you for joining me this afternoon as we discuss the topic securing financing for your agribusiness. Thank you. 
So um, just a couple of minutes, uh, we can see many more people uh, joining up on the platform. Uh, just a couple of minutes, and then I will I'll go I'll go live. I'll go I'll go on with the presentation. And let me just uh, reiterate that all, all questions to be sent were posted on Facebook and the questions will be addressed after the presentation. So please feel free and share your questions as we, we are on with the presentation. And the presentations will be, the questions will be, will be, will be answered after the presentation. Okay, so thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and all who have uh, connected from various countries. You are welcome to AgroMind's first live webinar on Facebook. This, this afternoon or this evening, we will be looking at the first in the series entitled Securing Credit Financing for Your Agribusiness. So this will be the, present, the outline for my presentation. I will start by defining what agribusiness is, and then we'll look at some of the, some of the uh, industry sectors that fall under agribusiness. We'll look at um, some of the key considerations you, 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 you have to look at before seeking credit finance. We'll also discuss the nature of credit from different types of financial institutions. We'll look at what banks or credit institutions look out for before they give you money. Then we will look at how banks perceive agribusinesses. And uh, finally, but definitely not the least, developing an agribusiness credit financing proposal. What are the salient things that you should consider? So we've been talking about agribusiness and all of us, I presume, are very interested in the area of agribusiness. Generally, the business that relates to agriculture. Agribusiness covers the following 
industry sectors. All right. So all companies who produce or manufacture inputs of one kind or another, inputs such as fertilizers, agrochemicals, biological agents, all these would come under the broad heading of agribusiness. Then we look at the production side, where we have farmers both for crops and animals who produce, uh, farmers small, medium scale, and large scale, farmers who produce for the purpose of making, making income and profit. They also come under agri business. Then we have the those who deal in commodity trading. So they buy commodities from farmers usually and may sell it locally within their countries or export to other countries. The same applies to all manufacturing companies that produce food, like the food industry, those who produce food industry ingredients, and generally food industry raw materials would also come under the broad umbrella of agribusiness. Then we can talk about mechanization, equipment manufacturers, manufacturers of tractors, harvesters, planters, sprayers, and all other accessories that are used in the area of agriculture, irrigation equipment, and, and all those things. Then of course, storage. If companies that operate warehouses, uh, warehouses for commodities, storage, st cold storage facilities, such as freezers and cold rooms that are meant to keep the integrity of food produce or food products intact also all come under the general umbrella of agribusiness. What are, the what are the different types of financing and credit sources? All right. So where are the sources from which we can finance our agribusinesses? Agri the first I want to talk about is your own equity, your own savings. This is very important in any business endeavor and therefore also important in agribusiness. Before you set out to, to start or to grow your agribusiness, know that your own savings plays an important role as a financing source. Besides your, your own savings or your own equity, you could have other, other individuals or companies who can take equity position in your business to become partners as shareholders. Usually in Africa, we all want to go alone, but going alone, some of the times can be slow and it takes you a longer time to grow. You need other people to join you with their resources so that you can grow faster. If you are a startup and you have a brilliant agribusiness idea, you can then approach venture capital firms who would look at your idea and may decide to invest in your idea by taking equity. Aside from the equities, there are other sources of finance such as commercial banks who may grant you one loan type or another, or development banks, savings and loan uh, companies, microfinance companies, circles, cooperatives. And these are all sources of financing that we could take to grow 
our agribusinesses. One key source of financing that we usually leave out, but which is very recommended, is to use supplier's credit, where your supplier provides you with one item or the other, be it equipment, a machine, a plant, or even raw materials or inputs, and you are allowed to pay later when you have been able to generate cash. Or your buyers, some of the time your buyers can advance you money to produce for them under some agreed terms and conditions. And the last two I've talked about, supplier's credit and buyer's credit, are usually um, cheaper forms of financing or sources of financing for your agribusiness. There are different types of financing that we can obtain from a financial institution, be it a commercial bank or a development bank, all right? Typically, we can get long-term financing from a commercial bank or a development bank. Normally, the long-term may be five to 10 years within which you will be made to repay the loan or the facility that you would have taken. Then there are medium term, medium term loans. Let me mention that the long term loans are usually used to finance fixed assets such as machines, such as a manufacturing plant, or some of the times even in the acquisition of land when you, you are actually uh, operating on a very large, large uh, space of land. Medium terms are used for assets whose economic life could be long, but they are usually not very expensive. So typically you may be made to repay within a period of three to five years because the cost involved was not too high. Then last but not the least, um, we can talk about short-term financing, which is usually used to finance working capital. So working capital for, for an input dealer would be stocking inventory and retailing such inventory to farmers, and then he pays back. For a farmer, it will be used to purchase inputs such as fertilizer, agri agrochemicals, and seeds, and then um, to, to finance the production activity for a particular system. For an, an aggregator, it will be a, a loan to help the aggregator buy commodities from different producers and move into a warehouse and then later on sell them and pay back to the bank. For an agro-processor, it, it will be used to purchase raw materials. So depending upon the industry or what the factory is producing, it will be used to purchase the various ingredients, raw materials, probably pay for energy and other things to allow for, for the production activity. So the, these uh, credit types are used depending upon, based on the purpose uh, for which they are needed. All right. Usually long-term finances or financing can be obtained from a commercial bank or a development bank, they usually have uh, funds which probably may have long-term uh, deposit uh, um, nature, all right? Uh, so it is very likely to get a long-term from a commercial bank 
uh, than some other financial institutions that I'll talk about later. Now, one form of financing or financing instrument is what we call the lease financing. Lease financing you use to finance equipment, machinery, or plants for that matter, manufacturing plants. On the lease financing, the borrower would be required to pay an initial deposit, which we call initial rent. And then and the initial rent could be 10%, 20%, 15%, 25%, depending upon a number of factors, all right? Uh, so depending upon the nature of the asset which is being acquired, the initial deposit may vary as a percentage of the, of the total cost. Now, in theory, under this financing, the asset is owned by the lender, who is the lessor. And then the lessor allows the lessee, who is the borrower, to use that particular asset and pay over time. Now, when the lessor, the lessee, or the borrower finishes paying for the asset, the asset would be handed over to the borrower to own. In my experience as a former banker lending towards agriculture and agribusiness, this is my preferred, my preferred financing instrument for, for agricultural equipment and for plants. Because under the lease financing, the underlying asset, that the collateral, the underlying collateral is the asset that is being purchased. Under lease finance, it is unlikely for the bank to ask you for any landed property, um, unless they have very genuine reasons. Right. So it's my preferred financing instrument for agricultural equipment, agricultural machinery, manufacturing plants, et cetera, et cetera. The other types of financial institutions uh, series and loan companies and microfinance institutions. Usually, these ones do not have long term financing because their deposit base is usually and typically short term and therefore may not learn, be able to learn for a long period. So, they are good for short term financing of agribusiness but not appropriate for long-term financing instruments. Please, uh, as a reminder, keep uh, posting your questions on Facebook where we would, we would answer them after the presentation. What's the major difference between the two groups of, of uh, financial institutions I've mentioned? Right. So for commercial and development banks, usually and relatively, the, the, the cost of financing is cheaper. I'm not saying it is cheap, but relative to savings and loans and circles and microfinance, they, they have cheaper source, sources of finance. All right. They usually can learn to cover medium to long term loans, and also they do short term loans. And I think for most of the time, um, commercial banks and development banks could be a good source for financing for agribusiness, especially when it comes to long-term and medium-term financing instruments. Savings and loans and microfinance, some of the times may borrow from commercial banks to own land, and therefore their pricing or their cost is usually higher than most of the commercial banks or development banks, as the case may be, right? Like I mentioned, they do not usually lend medium to long term because they don't have the, the deposit base to do that. And therefore, service and loans or microfinance may not be the most suitable for asset financing for agribusinesses 
um, generally in most countries. One of the other source of financing your business, as I mentioned, is the supplier's credit. Some of the time we do not look at this, but they can be a cheaper form of financing your business where you can get your supplier. Either he's selling to you inputs or some piece of equipment to give it to you on credit so he allows you to pay over time. The cost may come cheaper than borrowing from a commercial bank. Or getting your buyer to advance you some money to buy what you need to produce either a produce or a product, usually under some agreed terms and conditions about you supplying. And this may also come cheaper than a commercial bank loan. Of course, you've got to make sure that you do not take the trust that underlies this agreement for granted. As long as you are trusted to pay back either to the supplier or to make sure that the buyer gets the requisite produce that you have produced, you, you are likely to continue to get these kinds of cheaper source of financing for your business. Trust is important in business and it is important in helping you to secure cheaper source of financing for your business. What are some of the considerations that we need to seek? We need to consider if we want to obtain credit financing. Well, once again, let me mention that you must necessarily have your own money inside the business. You, because you never start a good business with a loan or a debt. That business may, may be dead on arrival. So your own, own money or your equity is extremely important in any endeavor that you, you, you want to undertake in agribusiness. You also want to look at suppliers' credit and buyers' advance, which are also very important. You've got to explore those opportunities even before you look at going to a bank, as the case may be. Then the third consideration would be, is there anybody who can put money in this, my business, become a partner as in a shareholder so that we share the risk and the returns together? Now, when you have considered all these things, then you probably may look at going to a commercial bank to borrow money and to pay interest on the borrowed money. It is important that we seek to reduce our debts when we are running our businesses to the extent possible. All right. Um, so that when we go to the bank, they don't give us money. Explore the other sources first. They may come cheaper than rushing to a commercial bank. A commercial bank, I will say, should be your last resort because it comes at a cost. And some of the time, the costs are not, are not low. They could be high, depending upon the general uh, interest rates in your country. What do banks look for when you go to them to look for funding? One of the key things that a bank will look for is to answer the question, is there a market for this product or produce? Because the bank doesn't want to have a situation where you produce 
or harvest, and you are now moving around looking for, for a buyer. You probably may not get their money back. So usually they would say, do you have an off ticker? An identifiable or identified strong off ticker who would take the produce or product and pay you money so that you can pay back the bank um, for the loan that you have taken. Another important thing that the, 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 the bank will look at is, do you understand the various types of risk that are associated with your business? And how are these risks being mitigated by the things you do and the things you don't do? I'll come later on to talk more about these risks along the value chain. But it's important that you look at risk. For example, if a bank has to learn to a farmer who operates under rain-fed agriculture against one which has irrigation, it is likely that the bank will finance the one with irrigation facility because then there is some certainty of success when you have irrigation in, in your production activity. The next thing I'll talk about which banks look at is a healthy cash flow. And I'm talking about cash flow, which is the movement of actual cash into a business or out of a business. I'm not talking about revenues, which you would establish once goods leave your company. We are talking about cash, the payment of the actual cash. All right. So usually you sell your commodity or your produce or your product, you are paid cash. It moves into your system, your cash flow as cash inflow. And then your typical cash flow uh, streams will go to the purchase of inputs or ingredients or raw materials or equipment, etc. But what is more important with cash flow is that the bottom line, your net cash flow position should always be positive. Your cash outflows must be less than your cash inflows. And that is what convinces any lender that you have the capacity to pay back the loan you have taken. The next thing that the bank will look at is how profitable is your endeavor? Is your, how profitable is your business? What kind of margin are you making on the business? Is the margin adequate? Adequate enough to keep you alive? Or the margin is so small that the slightest disruption in the, in, the, in the system, in the market, could create a problem for you. You must bear in mind that the more productive you are in any aspect of the value chain activities that you are involved in, the likelihood that you get more profit. If your productivity is low, it is likely that you make less profit or some of the times when you are not efficient, you make a loss. And no bank wants to finance a loss making business because they are not involved in charity. Yet another thing that banks look at for are how much of equity, the owner's money is inside the business as against how much debt there is in the business. Banks normally would prefer to lend to a business that has less debt relative to owner's equity or owner's capital. So we must keep an eye on these things. Um, you don't keep piling debt and debt and debt you will become unattractive uh, to any lender. Try as much as possible to reduce the debt that you take and use a lot more of your money, especially when you are starting the business. And let me say that based on my experience over the years in Ghana and other countries where I have worked, there's always a tendency that when we make profit out of our business, we want to invest the profit in things that don't relate to the business. Instead of us retaining the gains or the earnings in the business 
and growing our earnings or equity as a shareholder, we tend to buy things that do not impact positively on the business. And then when we run out of cash in the business, then we run to a bank to go and borrow and pay more interest rate on it. Every business owner must endeavor to invest, to retain the earnings you are making in your business. It is one of the sure ways by which you can grow your business. Make it your policy that at all times, you will pay down your debt. Pay down your debt. When you pay down your debt, then relatively, your equity would be higher than your debt as you pay down your debt. At this point, I want to share with you what we call the five C's of lending that normally the banks use when they are looking at your application for a loan. The first thing they look at is your character. You ask me, what is it about my character that a bank would be interested in? Right. So they typically will look at, have you borrowed before from another bank or even from another individual? Even in some countries, um, are you owing on your telephone bills and your electricity bills and you are unable to pay or you are refused to pay? All come into the determination of your character. Your credit history can make or, or make you in your quest to raise money to finance your agribusiness. Then your capacity. Do you, are you capable of paying back the loan that you are taking? How much money, how much income are you going to make relative to the debt and the size of the debt? Is management having the capacity to manage the business correctly to make profit rather than losses? In most agribusiness, there's a technical aspect. Is there a technical capacity adequate enough to manage the technical aspects of, of, the, of the enterprise? So if you are into farming, do you understand the agronomic requirements? Do you have a good understanding of the soil? Do you have a good understanding of which variety you should plant, the plant population density? Do you have a good understanding of the pests and the diseases that are likely to attack the crop and how to deal with them expeditiously? Do you have that technical capacity? If you are into food processing, you have the technical capacity to understand food hygiene, food safety issues, and other technical issues that are important in, in operating a food manufacturing company. Do you understand the requirements of the standards and the specifications? Is your system able to deliver to meet these specifications so that the market would accept your products as and when they are released? That capacity is important. The next important thing that banks look at is capital. How much of, how much of your own money is already invested in the business? Because your skin must be in the game, as we as we, we 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 say it in banking. You cannot start a business and you don't have any money of your own, and you want to borrow hundred percent to do that business. That business will be dead on arrival because your financial risk will be very high. So your own money, how much of it is already in the business? The bank would determine that, and so oh, okay, this 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 guy has put a lot of his money into this business. Let's go help him. Then the thing that they normally use against us when we go boring, collateral, inadequate collateral. Your assets ordinarily should be enough to cover the amount of money that you are borrowing. 
But let me be quick to mention that your character, is one of the most important things that would make way for collateral in some cases, All right? So you must be trustworthy wherever you are. You must be trusted by your suppliers. You must be trusted by your, 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 your customers. Then you can be trusted by a bank. If you have a bad reputation in the community that when you buy, you don't pay, it will get to the bankers, believe you me. So we need to look at this. And then the last but not the least important thing about the five C's is the conditions for the loan. So what is the purpose? What exactly do you want to borrow the money for? You certainly don't want to borrow the money to go and buy a nice car when your business, it has nothing to do with your business, all right? Um, they also want to look at the amount involved, how much interest, interest rate that they will charge. Is your business able to pay for the loan and the interest charge? How long should the loan be given to you based on the purpose? These are some of the things that financial institutions look at before they lend to you. Now, is there any way that banks perceive agribusinesses? Yes, there's a way that banks perceive agribusinesses. In fact, most banks are scared of agriculture to finance agriculture, and for that matter, agribusiness in general. The perception of risk is high for agribusinesses. Is even much more higher for the production stage of the value chain, of any value chain. All right. And I want us to look at some of the risks that are likely to befall the various actors of a value chain and how and which risk we should make sure that we have adequately mitigated. In, in, in our business as we seek financing. All right. So when you deal in inputs, you, there's always a tendency that you will buy the wrong products with which, which quality is not right. All right. Or low quality, maybe because it was selling cheap, you went to buy, but the quality is suspect. Now, when your quality is suspect, it is unlikely that you'll be able to sell to people because one person buys and it doesn't work for him. He just goes around saying that I bought Felaza from this person or I bought produce from this person and the quality was bad and therefore uh, be wary of that supplier. If you buy inputs and store under wrong conditions, there's a possibility that the inputs will go bad and therefore you will not be able to sell them. So if you are not able to sell them, how are you going to pay your loan? There are many other risks that can befall an input dealer. Right. Then at the production stage where we are producers, farmers of various types, there could be lack of, lack of market for the produce which is a risk some of the time farmers produce and they don't have buyers. There's a possibility that at harvest, the prices will go down so down that the farmer will not be able to recoup his investments. Some of the times the farmer is unable to prepare the land. We are it's unable to prepare the land in the most suitable way to allow for productive production. So at the time the seeds they use may be poor quality. There could be problems with pests and diseases. And then there could be climate change effects that can affect the, the producer. Now, all these risks will have to be mitigated um, in our business models to make us attractive to banks. Trade aggregators, if your cost of production is, uh, is high, 
uh, you are likely not to be profitable. If the quality of the, uh, of the commodity you purchase from producers, you are not um, careful with it and you buy any, any commodities which quality is not good, you may not be able to sell your produce and that can create problems for you. For processors, there are other risks. Some don't even have sufficient raw materials to process. So the capacity of the manufacturing plant is grossly being underutilized. Meanwhile, you have fixed costs that you have to meet or that you don't have work, you know, enough or sufficient working capital that allows you to buy what you need and to operate at a reasonable level. Warehouse, warehousing owners, um, if you practice poor inventory uh, management system, you may find out that you stock good commodity and by the time they are leaving you, um, the quality has been compromised and you are unable to, to sell it for, uh, for premium price. Security may be a problem. And like I said, all these risks would have to be mitigated in order for us to become attractive to lenders. And then when you have, when you export or retail, you're also exposed to a lot of, a lot of risk. I mean, out of the blue, if a uh, catastrophe such as uh, COVID-19 pops its head, it has a tendency of affecting your export business because it will affect the logistics and management of your commodity and the movement of it from one country to another, and it may help, it may hurt you uh, in, in, in the assessing market. So we need to bear some of these things in mind. The last but not the least thing that I'll talk about is developing a fin financing proposal. Right. But it is important to know all the time to ask yourself some questions before you go and borrow. Do I really need to borrow this loan? I've seen people who borrowed who didn't really need to borrow. And some of the times the consequences are not very, uh, very good. You've got to look at what are the positive impacts and the negative impacts that your borrowing will have on your, on your company. I've seen people in my experience borrowing more than necessary and collapsing their business because the interest rate they have to pay is high and they end up working for the bank rather than working for themselves. It is important that when you are borrowing, you, you take your time to do your homework well. You've got to select the equipment that you know works because I've seen several examples of people importing equipment. The equipment comes, it is installed, but it doesn't work for years. So how are you going to pay the bank? So make sure that you select equipment that is known to work. Before you buy equipment, make sure that you know that equipment and that you know that it has worked somewhere and that it is very likely to work for you. You need to determine the, the correct throughput capacity of the equipment. In this case also, I've seen several where people go and buy very huge equipment and the capacity they use is just a very small of that capacity. But mind you, when the equipment is big and huge, the cost of fit will be very high. So determine the capacities you need. Other instances, people buy very small equipment with small capacity and um, it becomes a problem. Ensure that there's capacity to, to service or maintain your, your equipment before you go and buy equipment from any location. Mm -hmm. And ensure that the design of your the design of your equipment 
is um, the design of your equipment is said that it is consistent with your own requirements, your, your energy requirements, your power rating, and other things. The other thing you need to look at is other requirements which are more regulatory in nature. And the banks will demand this. For example, if you are in the food processing industry, the banks may decide, what, are your workers, do they have health certificates? Because their health conditions can impact on the safety of the produce or the products that you produce and create problems for you, for other people, other consumers on the market. Some of the time they may they request for factory certifications, um, maybe from the Food and Drugs Administration of your country, or the standards organization for your country, and many other such certifications. And then things to do with the environment and the requirements of the environment uh, are also important for you to pay attention to because the banks may request for them. What should be included in your proposal that you submit to the bank? Let me quickly say that your proposal must have a purpose and the purpose must be very clear. The amount that you request should be the correct amount. Don't ask for less, don't ask for more. So you've got to do your homework very well. Before a bank listens to you, you've got to shoot on your own volition, do some analysis of your previous financial performance and demonstrate clearly to the bank your ability or the ability of your business to pay the loan because you are going to pay the loan from the business. If there are any technical issues that you need to describe, which would help to explain how the risk okay and how the risk will be mitigated, you've got to clearly demonstrate that in your, in your application so that the bank will understand you that this business, they know their risk and they know how the risk can be mitigated. And therefore, when we put in the money, we are sure to get our money back. All right, so do a risk analysis, a thorough risk analysis, and then suggest how that risk will be mitigated. It's extremely important that you do that rather than letting the bank do it because they may be scared that some of your risks are not mitigable. In conclusion, let me reiterate, reiterate some of the major points that I've made. Your own equity is always the best source of financing for your agribusiness. Once again, let me indicate that getting financing from your suppliers or your buyers may be cheaper, much, much cheaper, and therefore give you better returns. Your own equity or equity that other people will put into your business should be your first preference. And remember that character is the, bet, the key bet in your assessing cheaper financing for your business, character. Please note that we set up our business with equity and grow it with debt. I kept saying that you do not start a business with debt because you may end up using all the gains to pay your interest and your business may not be sustainable. Please know that debts will always have to be paid for and therefore don't take too much of it when it is not needed. And let me stress this point. When you borrow from any source, please be willing and able to pay. Thank you very much. I will pause here and um, we'll take your questions. Um, All right. Ask, yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Francis Osei, for this very enlightening um, webinar presentation on positioning your agribusiness to secure um, financing. Um, we have a number of questions from Nigeria, from Ghana, of course, from Zambia and a few others. So I think we'll start with a question from 
Osman um, Dara, he's asking, which way do you suggest or what do you suggest or is your preference between lease financing and long-time financing? Osman wants a bit more clarity on, 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 on your preference between lease financing and long-time financing. Okay. Osman, thank you for your question. And that's a very good question. My preference, as I indicated in my presentation, would always be for a lease finance. And let me explain to you why I prefer lease finance. Now, if you take a normal long-term financing from a bank, from any bank, they would take the assets that you are going to buy with the loan as security. They will take your personal guarantee as an additional security. They may ask for your mother's house or your father's house or your own house in a good location in the city because they want to cover themselves from a collateral perspective. When you do lease financing, the practice and indeed the law would limit the collateral to the underlying assets. So if you need money to buy a tractor under lease finance, the tractor will become your main collateral. The bank may take your personal guarantee in addition. All right? But they will require you to pay an initial rental, let's say 15% or 20% or 25%, as the case may be, depending upon the nature of the asset. If the asset is something that when they repossess, they can easily sell, it is likely that the initial rental will be low. If the asset is a specialized asset, that it will be difficult to find a buyer, a secondary buyer, then it is likely that the initial rental will be high. But your main collateral will be that of the asset and probably not anything more than that. So my, my preference is that if I took money from you to buy a tractor, that is what I should offer you as a collateral. But in this case, you pay an initial rental and, and that's the main difference. Whereas in the loan, you will not pay or you will not be required to pay an initial rental. Okay, so Osman, I hope that um, the difference is clear. All right, thank you, Mr. Say. Um, another question is from Tom Zam. And he's asking, is it possible for startups at the idea stage to secure long-term financing from banks without asking for collateral? All right, so thank you very much. I think I would say that it is very unlikely for a startup idea stage to finance an idea stage business with, with their kinds of financing. If you have an idea, which idea you believe in very much, you probably will be better off seeking for partners who can bring their investment with together with yours to start. Or you go to a venture capital fund or an equity fund. They have a higher risk appetite for startups. But I'm not saying that it is impossible. It all depends on the value proposition, the ability of your business to operate and to repay the facility. Um, if it's a specialized product you are going to produce and there's a, a big uh, customer who has the resources to pay and for you to enable you to pay back the loan, a bank may look at that. Banks may also look at financing startups when the equity portion of the total financing is higher than the debt portion. Then the bank may look at that. I've handled a number of uh, big ticket deals where, which were green, green, um, green field, as we call it, startups, but the equity was high, so I could get the, the banks to favorably consider it for, for some of my clients. 
Right. And then we have a question from Koko Buafo from Ghana. And she's asking, are there any specific organizations who provide credits in the form of equipment or who provide credits for equipment? All right, so Koko, thank you. Yes, there are. And in all these cases, you would also have to make sure that you're, you're, you make a solid case for it. I know, for example, some of the equipment vendors have a, a credit facility um, going for their equipment, okay? But you've got to do your homework well. I know one of the major um, agric equipment and uh, companies in Accra that, that has a credit facility. Um, they may likely take a certain down payment percentage and then allow you to um, pay the rest over a period. But like I kept hammering, please, when they do you that for you, make sure that you pay, make sure you don't swap them. But that there are, and, and we could have conversations, Coco, uh, since you are already in Accra, we could have conversations if you get in touch. All right. Um, there's Victor, um, another Nigerian. He's asking that in my country, Nigeria, um, microfinancial institutions and commercial banks' interest rates are as high as 20 to 60% per annum. What interest rates should young farmers look for that can help us grow and fulfill our agricultural potential? All right. So once again, I come back to the advice I gave. As much as possible, have your own funds, especially when you are starting. Two, when you need more financing, is there anyone who is ready to share your visions and your aspirations together who also has some investment you can make and take part of the share so that you become joint owners? That may be better than going for 60% interest rates. You may also look at a supplier's credit. The supplier's credits are usually cheaper on the market than a commercial bank loan. So depending upon the equipment that you want to buy, go to the vendor and have some arrangements. You are likely to get a better deal than going to a bank to borrow and use the borrowed money to buy the equipment. Okay. But I mentioned that between a commercial bank or development bank and the microfinance or savings and loans, the, the commercial bank's interest rates are usually relatively lower than microfinance or social or savings and loans because the savings and loans and the microfinance institutions would typically borrow their funds from a commercial bank. Okay. But the, some of the time they are within our countries credit guarantee schemes that we would have to, we would have to leverage on to reduce either our interest or to reduce the requirement for collateral. Um, in Nigeria, I know that you have NESAL, so you can get your bank to apply for NESAL guarantee cover for you um, when, you are, when you are borrowing. Under normal circumstance, when you have a credit card guarantee, your bank should charge you less than they will charge somebody without a credit guarantee. But that's a conversation that started since the time of Adam and will continue because the banks usually do not want to reduce their interest rate even when they have a good uh, credit guarantee cover. Okay. We'll take the last two. Nigeria, uh, Steven, also in Nigeria, I know you have Uncle Borrowers, you know, fund and other lines of credit from the Central Bank of Nigeria, which are much cheaper. And in those funds, you have um, the, the interest rates are predetermined by the central bank, and therefore the banks don't have to charge beyond that. So please look out for some of those um, opportunities or incentivized schemes and uh, leverage on them to finance your agribusiness. Okay, um, thank you. We'll take the last two questions. There's Kasimo from Uganda. And she's asking, can you stand as a guarantor in seeking loan from a bank for an agribusiness? 
But the concept of a guarantor is supposed to answer the question, if the borrower is unable to pay, would the guarantor have what it means to pay on behalf of the borrower? So before any bank or any lender would take you, would accept a guarantor for you or you as a guarantor for somebody else, they have to determine your weight. Are you a heavyweight or you're a lightweight? Do you have the resources to pay in the event that the original borrower is unable to pay or fails to pay? And some banks may accept that if the grantor is, 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 uh, is strong financially. But if your grantor is not as strong as you yourself, then no bank would accept him as, as a guarantor to secure a loan for another borrower. Okay. Okay. And then the last question um, from Raphael. Many agripreneurs are in debt because of the high cost of starting an agricultural business. How can we work around being in debt before or for us or before we take our businesses to the next level? So I think he's asking with the concept of they're already in debt. And so how do you get out of it since you cannot secure financing with a high debt to equity ratio? All right, so uh, simply I would say, reduce your debts and create more room for additional debts. If you have debts and you are unable to reduce that debt, then it will be difficult for you to attract more debts. Now, when you are in that situation, I would suggest that you look for a partner, an investor partner who will bring more, more equity investment into the company, which equity funds could be used to pay down the debt or to buy the things that are needed to increase the, the level of business. If it's a production, the level of production if it's um, warehousing the level of stock to enable you pay down your existing debt. And I want to recommend partnerships and pulling resources together for African youth. You know, here we all want to do it individuals because you think that at the end of the day, you are only looking at the benefits, but there are also risks. In every business venture, there are risks, there are difficulties. So if you allow people to come in and they come in with their resources, you may share the bedding together, but you would also share their, their benefits together. All right, and young people should learn to come together, push their ideas and their strength together and do the things that they have to do. Look at Google, it was not done by only one man. There were two young people who came together, all right? And they raised a, 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 a giant company. That, that, that bit is very, very important. And we've got to learn that partnerships help to reduce our stress, especially our financial stress as a business. Because we normally have a saying that it is better to have 1% of 1 million than 100% of one, all right? So let's, let's look out for people who have the same thinking and the same mindset that we have and partner with them so that we, we can reduce the need for debt because debt is expensive and they have to be paid. Right, okay. I, I think we'll have to take um, a couple of more questions because it, I think the, the rate at which they are coming in is, is is pretty interesting. And um, there is Rockford from Zambia, and he's asking, do we have agribusiness lending institutions that are working in Africa? Agribusiness focused lending institutions that are working in Africa from Rockford in Zambia. Okay, so Rockford, thanks for your question. You, you know, over the years and until recently, we saw agriculture as a developmental activity. All right, so it doesn't get funded well. The productivity levels are very low. They pretty much make lo losses more than make profit. 
and the institutions that were financing them, which are usually the agricultural development banks in their respective countries, appear to have, all of them appear to have collapsed because they are funded by government and governments get broke, so the banks in turn get broke. And it has not been very good for, for the financing of agribusiness. There are a few countries that have very strong agricultural focused uh, financing institutions um, that have the capacity to understand the technicalities of agriculture, for example, and therefore are able to lend and recover their monies. But these are not, these are not uh, many. Um, I know that in, in Ghana, for example, we have the we used to have the Agricultural Development Bank, which has now become a, a universal bank, and they have reduced their lending to agriculture. But when it used to be, it was the main um, uh, financier for for the agricultural sector. Um, some of the commercial banks now have capacity to lend to agriculture, so uh, they are beginning to increase their portfolio sizes for agriculture, but let me agree with you that there are not many of such banks. The equity bank in Kenya, for example, is very good and strong in agricultural lending. Um, I think in Tanzania, the MNC, um, which has, uh, is owned by the state and by uh, this uh, Rabobank, are also very strong in agriculture. Um, there are some other banks in some other countries um, that are, are strong in, in, in agriculture. And some of the commercial banks are also beginning to look uh, favorably to, to learning to agriculture. But we are not there yet. We are not there because, largely because of the perception of the high risk. Okay, so we'll take our final question. And, and, and to, to everybody else who has posed a question, we would advise that you you, you, you sent your questions or inquiries to the emails that um, is displayed on the, on, on the presentation dashboard. And we'll be very glad to get back with you. So the last question from Kali Bello, I think from Tanzania. Sir, we need to learn the strategic plan that can make agribusinesses to progress without bank loans. What is your take? All right. So... I think in terms of strategy, and thanks, Bello, for, for this important uh, question. Uh, from a strategy point of view, I've shared a few. which I think that if we look at, they will help us more. Have your own money. So you don't just wake up one morning with empty pocket and say you want to set up an agri business. Please save. Especially when you are using all your money to buy fanciful gadgets. It, it will be difficult. Two, please partner with your friends, your colleagues, your allies, and some of your family members to raise the needed capital to start the agribusiness. Because you may not be able to do it all by yourself, you know, on a solo base. Three, explore suppliers' credits. Explore advances advances from, from buyers. Explore these. And, me, and just take it for me that these all require a high level of trust and character. I've seen people raise big businesses just on the back of being truthful to a supplier. They supply them, they paid back on time, they took Another supply, they paid back. They took another supply, they paid back. And that was all. They grew their businesses and the business became strong. But when you take a supply from someone and you refuse to pay or to pay on time unless it goes to the police or goes to court, you'll be finished. So for me, these three things are the, some of the best strategies. Your own money, partner with other people who will bring their money so that your equity is strong. And three, using other suppliers, credit, or, or a buyer's advance to help you grow your business before you go to the normal banks 
to go and borrow and pay high interest rates. Okay. Right. Um, is there any other question? Yes. Yeah, so, Mr. Said, um, just signal that he will take two final questions, even though I decided to cut it off. So, just two questions. Um, Ragai Ivan is asking Does having insurance for agricultural production, majorly farmers, provide an added advantage on assessing credits from institutions like banks? Does having insurance for agricultural production provide added advantage on insuring on us assessing credits from institutions like banks? Ragai from Kenya. Okay, Ragai, thanks. Um, insurance, crop insurance or agri insurance is very key in actually mitigating a lot of the uh, very key risk that will befall an agricultural production enterprise. So you typically would take an insurance that will cover droughts or strange pests and diseases or a flood or any other peril that could critically undermine your, your business, right? And once you take that insurance, you give comfort to the financial institution to say that at least when these things happen, when there's drought and it doesn't rain at the right time or it doesn't rain for the requisite number of days, I have a place where I can go to and seek redress, which is the insurance payout. All right, which the bank can use to, to defray the loan. And that's why in most other countries, in these days, there is some effort at encouraging the establishment of agricultural insurance uh, companies. Uh, countries are working on agricultural insurance policies and laws and regulation um, that will help. Um, I know for a fact that in Nigeria, under NESAL, the agricultural insurance uh, uh, component was given a lot of boost. In Ghana, under the GESAL, agricultural insurance is a key thing. In fact, the GESAL, any lender must, every lender who lends to the agricultural space must take an agricultural insurance cover to mitigate some of the default risk. Um, in Rwanda, where our firm went to do some work, on the uh, designing of uh, agricultural credit, uh, credit guarantee. Uh, they had in 2018, um, you know, um, uh, just published uh, a policy on agricultural insurance uh, for farmers, both farmers, both for crops and livestock. And I know that in Kenya, uh, there is uh, many other countries. So it's, it's becoming a, a relevant component in mitigating some of the risks that have so frightened the banks and they don't want to lend. And, and I know for a fact that in the face of insurance, uh, some of the banks are now willing to, to lend um, largely uh, once they understand what, the, what perils the insurance is covering. All right. And um, our final question, as we promised, Eric Corsa from Ghana. I would want to know how, I would want to know much about EBITDA as a requirement by most credit investors. I want to know how much about EBITDA as a requirement by most credit investors. That's a All right. So you see, EBITDA is actually, thank you, uh, thank you, um, Mr. Corsa. EBITDA is earnings before interest tax depreciation. All right. And um, at that stage, your, your general administrative expenses and your overheads and your cost of sales have already been catered for in your financial, in your profit and loss statement, All right? Now, when you are more efficient, your, your EBITDA is likely to be relatively high. If you are less efficient, your EBITDA would be low. Now, out of the EBITDA, you are now going to pay your interest to the bank. You are now going to pay your taxes, and you are now going to make provision for your depreciation. So if your EBITDA is low, then by the time you pay your interest, you probably pay your tax, you may be running at a loss. And that is why EBITDA is very important in the determination of financial strength whenever 
you are lending or even investing in somebody else's business. It's, it's a measure of your efficiency or effectiveness as a business, all right? Um, your gross margin, then you take care of your, your indirect tax, your indirect cost, and then, um, then you, 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 you want to determine at that time, what is the level of your EBITDA? Um, like I said, if you are efficient, your EBITDA is likely to be relatively high. So you pay your interest out of that. You pay your taxes, which are legal requirements or regulatory requirements. You are likely to register a profit. And when your EBITDA is low because of inefficiency, then you are likely to go under the water and you may not be able to pay uh, the bank its, its amount. I hope it's a process that helps. Yes. Right. So, so, so in, the, then, in the words in the words of Tom Zoom Badi, um, as as part of a representation of the final comments from all the other um, individuals that have posed their questions, his comments is this is a nicely packaged presentation. Thank you, Agrominds Africa, for putting this together for young African agripreneurs. We look forward to learning and partnering more with you. Thanks to the presenter, Mr. Francis Osei, too for doing justice to this topic. God bless Africa and its farmers. Over to you, Mr. Francis. All right, so thank you very much, all of you who, who joined us on this platform. This is just the first in a series of presentations that we seek to give to the agromines community across um, about a lot of countries in Africa. Uh, it's our belief that when our knowledge base increases, we are likely to perform better in the sector with our agribusinesses and Africa will be the, the beneficiary. So just stay tuned for our second uh, uh, series in this uh, series of lectures and we would be, we would be, we would be um, happy to be staying close to you over the coming weeks and months. And uh, as you look, also look forward to the final uh, uh, episodes on the Agromai Challenge. Thank you. And uh, those of our, of, our, of our friends and our brothers who are celebrating uh, the Eid, happy Eid to all of you, wherever you may be in and around Africa. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again.